Hey, how are you guys doing today? So I, I am going to introduce you to a system of reading the Bible, a system of analyzing what season we are in. Now, what I have found over the 10 plus years that I've been doing this is that I see that the government and the social political environment actually lines up with this particular county. I'm gonna to try to explain it as, as short as possible, but I also, before I enter into that discussion, I wanna tell you that this is not about politics. This is, um, it's not even about um, challenging you to a different spirituality. What it is, is just I wanna share with you something that's a different point of view for you to look at uh, something, the same thing from a different angle. That's my, that's my whole intent. Now, <clears throat> that being said, as you already know, what we have is not an attack against the current president, but what we have today, in, in what just happened in the last week, is that the standing chief um, uh, of the military, right? That he, that's the president, the commander in chief, took some actions that are counter to what any soldier and veteran like me would constitute as being safe, as being right, and being um, constitutionally. Why? Because the Constitution makes it very clear that it is the job of the federal government to protect the sovereign citizens. And when you leave a bunch of people unprotected, you have just violated the very core of the Constitution. Second, what is it to be an American? An American, as if you count my last video, I was talking about how we, as Americans, are very different than other countries. We don't, we're not a historical country that has been around for thousands of years, hundreds of years, but what we are, we're based upon a constitution, the Constitution of the United States, which is something that every sovereign should know it by heart, should be able to ratify it on a yearly basis, right? Especially upon becoming the age of adulthood, that's the first time I believe every single American should be able to read it and go, yes, I still agree with the Constitution, and if not, here's the issues that I have. There's got to be a way for us to, to, to go through that process. Um, another way of saying covenant is a, um, an oath. Another way of saying it is a covenant, right? So the Constitution is a covenant. Every American that has become um, uh, naturalized is entered into the covenant in between that individual and the Constitution of the United States. It is not the uh, individual American into negotiations with the local government, with the municipalities, with, um, with the state. That's different. Each state has its own constitution. But the Constitution of the United States is a covenant, it's a standing covenant. And for 240 years, 200 and whatever, for 245 years that America has been around, this experiment has proven that what's different about us is that we're a people of covenant. So therefore, we ought to be conscientious that we're entering into covenant. What does that have to do with the Bible? The Bible is a covenant-based relationship. People talk about, you know, saved by grace and, you know, and, and not by our, our action and it's by faith. Look, I don't want to argue. I'm willing to talk about it. But that is not 100%. It's a truth. It's an incomplete truth because it is a covenant. God is a God of covenant, at least the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you have a different God, well or you have no other God, you still have a covenant with yourself, an agreement, There's areas that you will not violate. That's a covenant, okay? So I'm talking about the Judeo-Christian, um, if I can put it that way, um, entity that we call creator, that some people call God, that 
entity is a covenant-based, covenant-making um, entity with a specific people. And if you count yourself as to one of those faithful individuals, then you have entered into a covenant. It is not by grace. It is not um, free. It is maybe by mercy that we still are around, but it is based on covenant. Again, what does that have to do with anything? A covenant is a set of laws. A covenant is a set of rules, is an agreement that we enter into prior to executing that agreement. Like life insurance is another contract. It is a covenant. And if you're smart, you get yourself life insurance so that if something happens along the way of you walking, you know what? They're, you're leaving some, um, some beneficiaries, something for them to um, survive you in, in, a, in a good way. So... I'm trying to give a marriage is another covenant. All right. So now I've established what a covenant is, what is it to be American, and how Americans are covenant people. The Bible is a covenant based, and uh, we, the uh, those that, how do I say this? There is a misnomer. Everybody accepts the word Jew as in to talk about all of Israel. Okay, so only I'm going to use that term loosely for this discussion today. And, and so there are seven feasts, seven moments throughout a year's cycle in which the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob said, these are my special appointed times in which I am going to enter into uh, a reconnect, a ratification of said covenant. Because there's several covenants, right? It's not just, there's one big umbrella, which we call Torah, and then there's little ones. And then it is uh, folded out or multiples of seven. So there's seven, th seven throughout the year, and then there are seven days in a week, and we enter into uh, an acknowledgement of that covenant on the seventh day. So hopefully that makes sense. We are at the end of the cycle, and there's three left. Four of them have already passed. What's left is one known as Rosh Hashanah, which is also, I would call it a misnomer, because it is the receiving of the, of the covenant. That which was etched in stone, which some people know as the seven, uh, uh, sorry, the Ten Commandments. It's not commands, okay? There are seven sayings, and in there, there are some things that need to be broken down, but that's not for today. It isn't commands. It's ten sayings. So the giving of that and the, the oral, that which Moses heard, was given on that day. So there was written and there was spoken instructions. We call it oral Torah. All of that information received on the day that we call today Rosh Hashanah. Again, it is really known biblically as the Feast of Trumpets or the commemoration of the sound, right, when, when God spoke. This, like a business, is a moment that we're looking at the covenant and we are going, you know what, we need to make some amendments or no, I accept it just as is. In every business transaction on a yearly basis with insurance, you look at your agreement and you make sure that it's still good on a yearly basis. The same holds true when it comes to, it should come hold true to your relationship to whomever you worship. Whether that is yourself, look, you need to sit down with yourself, grab yourself by the back of the neck and say, you know what, self, we're going to sit down, we're going to have a conversation. I'm very happy with the way you've performed this year, or I'm not happy with it. And here are the reasons why. And this is what I like, this is what I don't like, okay? I'm just using that as an example. So, um, Feast of Trumpets, six. it starts the night of six, uh, uh, the 6th of this month, and it goes all the way through the 7th. That is the, the day that you get to take a look at, at your agreement biblically and do you still accept the terms or do you want something changed? Ten days after legal terms, right? You have ten days 
to reassess your position in that agreement and that we call it Yom Kippur. Now people say that that's a day of a fasting and repentance and while that is a function it is not the whole capacity of what that day is. So what happens on Yom Kippur? On Yom Kippur you sit down with your business partner right and you say these are the things that I have fulfilled according to our agreement. These are the things that I didn't do according to our agreement. These are the things that I expect you to do based upon my understanding of the agreement. And you give your partner the opportunity to say, yes, I agree, you see it the right way, or no, you misunderstood, blah, blah, blah. So, um, Rosh Hashanah, you ratify, you make any changes to the existing contract. 10 days later, you sit down and you enter into negotiation how the next year you're going to be operating and functioning within the conditions of said contract. Give you a minute to, to process that. Okay, so what happens is it's not a happy-go-lucky approach to just do an activity on a weekly basis and say, I'm saved or whatever it is terms that you use. We're talking about legal agreements. The world operates on legal agreements because it comes from God, the Most High, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So now, we're into the sitting down and having a peer review just like you have if you have a job. You go to the job and the boss says, you know what, it's time to sit down and talk about how you're doing in the, in the job. <clears throat> Tell me what you've done good. Tell me what, you, what you've excelled in and, and you get promotion. Or you don't get promotion. <clears throat> so with God, it's the same thing. Yom Kippur is that day where you're going to sit down and go, I need to to improve in my performance and here, here, and here, and this is what I need from you. Can you please provide it so that the next year I'm better than this year and last year I have improved by X, Y, Z. Okay. And once that is completed, Yom Kippur is done, then we, wait, we pause for a moment and then we enter into eight days of celebration. What does that mean? We call it Sukkot, which means tabernacle in which the whole community builds an elaborate temporary dwellings. You can find that all in the Old Testament, in the, in the Tanakh, you can find it in, in Torah. And, and it describes all the details on how we're supposed to observe it. But the principle behind it is that we finished the negotiation and if I and, and you were entering into a contract, when we were done signing, we congratulate each other for enter into or keeping the partnership. And then we go drink and we celebrate and we go eat. So guess what? For eight days, we stay in temporary dwellings, eating and drinking and singing and celebrating with one another. Um, some people say, well, we're celebrating the... the, the the messianic era we're, we're we're celebrating the messianic age where we are you know celebrating the future to come fine that's all true but this is from a law transactional we are now at the fun part of the business in which we all go out together as business partners we drink and we eat and we tell stories and we get to know one another those are the last three feasts the last three ceremonies that are left in the Jewish calendar or the Hebrew calendar. So I hope that has been of a service to you. I hope that you now look at the Bible slightly different than you did before. And if this has been of any good to you, if, um, please share it with other people. If you want to see more of this, let me know. I can come on a weekly basis and talk about this stuff. And your silence will tell me um, that you don't have any interest. So please share it, leave me a comment, or let me know if you want to see more of this stuff. I just wanted to share something that's, that's personal to me, and, and this is uh, concepts that I have learned and developed over 10 years, um, actually much longer than 10 years. I started studying the Seven Feasts of Israel. Uh, that's how I, I got to know them for the first time. 
since 1988. So it's been quite a while since I've been digging into this and um, just wanted to share a little bit. I hope it's, it's uh, of use to you and I won't know if you don't tell me. So leave me a comment and have a great day and I'll leave it at that. Bye.